What's going on YouTube? Geosnow right here. So in today's video we're talking about iOS 13.4.1, 13.4 and 13.3.1 jailbreak. Now we also have an important release in the jailbreak community. A very important jailbreak component has been released so this is actually quite good. Now as you probably know after announcing the iPhone SE 2020 Apple just decided to stop signing iOS 13.4 a couple hours ago which is both bad news and good news at the same time. I'm going to tell you why. But before we get into that Jake James has has released a very important component for the jailbreak. He posted in here, quote, here you go, currently patches all code sign related checks tested on iOS 12 and 13, monolithic and non-monolithic. And he open sourced it in here on GitHub, it's the patch finder 64. Now patch finders are actually very important for jailbreaks because these allow you to find the proper offsets to do your patches, for example for Anthe and code signing and stuff like that, which you wouldn't normally be able to do without a patch finder. Now this is based on zero patch finder 64 but it does have a lot of patches created by Jake James and this is actually the first patch finder for the iOS 13 that has been open sourced. The one from the uncover has been kept private and the other ones in the existence probably kept private as well. Probably kept private as well. So this is the first version of the patch finder for the 64-bit devices that we get for iOS 13. So why exactly is this an important release? Well since this patch finder supports iOS 13 this means that it's probably supporting iOS all the way up to iOS 13.3 since this is the last jailbreak available. However, it's probably very simple for Jake James to update it for iOS 13.4, 13.3.1, 13.4.1 13 once a TFP0 kernel exploit is out. So once a TFP0 kernel exploit is out for any of these versions in here, Jake James would be able to update the patch finder and therefore we would be able to create a jailbreak much easier than having to create a patch finder from scratch. Because as I said, this is the very first patch finder that works with iOS 13 and is publicly available. All the rest are kept private. Now speaking of iOS 13.4.1, I said that it's both bad news and good news that iOS 13.4 is no longer signed. Well if you take a look in here on the Apple security updates you can see that iOS 13.4.1 and iPadOS 13.4.1 because that's a thing now has now published CVE entries which means that there are no vulnerabilities patched in here compared to iOS 13.4 which as you can see does have a lot of them including one on the Apple Mobile File Integrity, which we do have to patch in order to bypass code signing on a jailbreak. And if you take a look in here, iOS 13.4 does have a couple of kernel vulnerabilities as well. As I said, iOS 13.4.1 does share the same security content with 13.4, which means that whatever works for a jailbreak on 13.4 will also work for 13.4.1, which is quite cool. But it also means that whatever vulnerabilities are in 13.4 will also work on 13.4.1, which is again quite cool. But 13.3.1 is actually the best for the moment to stay on if you want to jailbreak. Because as you can see, iOS 13.4 patched a lot of vulnerabilities and therefore 13.4.1 patches a lot of vulnerabilities. But some of these are kernel vulnerabilities, although not available from the sandbox. This one in here is particularly interesting, by Proteus of Quiho 360 Nirvan team. It says in here, quote, a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Now this looks like TFP0 to me, but it's not available from the sandbox, which means that if you want to use this for a 13.3.1 jailbreak, you will need a sandbox escape as well. But that's not exactly very, very hard to get. We might get one in the future. However, iOS 13.3.1 is the best version to stay on for the moment. Do not update to 13.4 or 13.4.1 because these do patch a lot of vulnerabilities, but I definitely recommend you to save your blobs if you can with TSS Saver in here for 13.4.1 because another version is currently in beta and of course it may come with new vulnerability patches. Check out our forum for more jailbreak news, it's available at jailbreak.fc365.info. But yeah, for the moment we already got an important component of a jailbreak, the patch finder, which would definitely work for iOS 13. And of course that's a good start, but I would definitely recommend you to stay on 13.3.1 for the moment. Thank you for watching, I am GSNow, till the next time subscribe to stay updated and peace out.